You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hey everyone, Alan Gingrich here. Glad you could all join us. Today it is my privilege to uh, introduce my special guest I have here, uh, Mr. Donnie Yant, Swamp Master himself. Welcome. Appreciate you being here, Donnie. Appreciate being invited. Yeah, and then your son, Eric Redbone, here as well. So uh, we're going to dig back in a little bit today, a little bit of the history behind the Yants and kind of goes back a long ways in terms of UKC's Beagle program. So with that said, uh, let's start a little bit with uh, talking about your family, Donnie. Uh, your whole family is kind of involved in the Beagles and have kind of been around you uh, with, with the Beagles. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah. You got your wife, um, Linda. She comes to a lot of the events with you. Yep. I was lucky. She uh, was in the outdoors, so she got involved with me, too, and um, continued in the clubs and helping with all the kitchen work and paperwork. And then my sister and my brother got involved, and obviously— Talk about Jeff. Yep. My brother, Jeff, and— he did probably 90% of the Master Hound work back in them days. Uh, and still has been till just recently, yeah, really. Yeah, just retired from it um, a year ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then Jason, right? Yep, my nephew Jason. He was heavy into it. And, um, and my nephew you, Jeffrey. Yeah. Uh, my nephew Danny McNeese, David McNeese. So. And a lot of those you still see up at the Calval Beagle Club, or called Lower Michigan now, I guess, but it used to be the right. Calval Club. You see all of those, and then uh, obviously also Redbone here. So, man, I'm I'm tickled to have you guys here today. I really am. So, uh, so yeah. So let's start with uh, beyond that. Let's talk a little bit about your pre UKC days and trials. What did that look like for the Yants before you started trialing in say UKC? Uh, it actually kind of turned into like a family tradition, you know, um, knowing that you were going to go to the trials and you're going to see so-and-so and friendship kind of turned into more. Uh, that's why it ended up being so important because it wasn't all about dogs. I mean, obviously we were going there with it to compete, but you also look forward to seeing the individuals that you don't get to see often enough, you know? Yeah. So were you competing in other, uh, before UKC, were you competing in other registries at all or mostly just no. pleasure hunting, just no, rabbit just hunting? just pleasure hunting. Back in them days, if you had dogs, if they ran a pheasant, yeah, it was so. Yeah. You didn't mind it. Yeah. Until you got to really get in the running competition, then you learned what needed to be done to have it dog that can compete yeah so let's talk a little bit before that how did you always have beagles always had hounds or how did how did, did. how did you grow up my dad had coon hounds and beagles and my uncles so uh kind of got passed on to getting a pup or young dog and so then probably at age seven eight i started uh running my own dogs around the back of the house or so where it all got started from for me yeah you now live in vicksburg which is about uh 20 miles from kalamazoo here 15 or 20 miles maybe have you always yep. lived in that area yes i have yep always lived around vicksburg and, um got to know some good friends around there where we could run dogs and so yeah so you you mentioned your dad also had coon hounds. Did you hunt quite a few of those or not really? Yes, I did. Did you? Yeah, we used to run coon hounds quite a bit. In night not hunts? Not in competition. Okay, just, uh, but uh, back in the days when uh, hides were worth, you know, yeah. something, um, we would go out five, six days a week, Yeah, you know, yeah. even getting out of school. Yeah. You know, yeah. still went out. Yeah. So, Eric, you, you probably don't ever remember a time when you didn't have dogs. No. 
my whole life we've had dogs. Um, the coon hounds, always had those up until recently. And then uh, the beagles, always had them, always running them. So mostly uh, just going out pleasure hunting and, you know, being a kid, I want to shoot some. So yeah, I used to shoot plenty of rabbits and it was fun. You know, it always let me take the dog down. I'd walk it down the road to the creek or something and go hunt those woods. And, uh, you know, if we weren't all together. So yeah, it was a lot of fun my whole life. Yeah. So how... How did it come about that you started? When did you first start the Calval Beagle Club? That was the first club, or was it called something else to begin with? Or was it the Calval Club to begin with? Uh, no, it was called Wasn't uh, it Lower Michigan, Lower Michigan yeah. Beagle Club. Yeah. And that's Which, what we went back to. Back to now. But the original yeah. was Lower Michigan Beagle Club. Yeah. And how did that start? How and why? Was it because of the um, UKC format? A buddy of mine that passed away now charlie martins he uh i give charlie a couple dogs and uh he brought it up to me about we ought to go to a trial so we did we went to a trial over in a town called reading area yeah and that was our first trial we ever went to and that's all it took so then we just uh, proceeded to uh, put together our own club, and uh, we uh, had quite a few members, young people that was involved in it. And then uh, I remember over on um, outside of Vicksburg, between Men and Vicksburg, there was a VFW out there, and we started a club out there, Lower Michigan Beagle Club. and. Um, I remember uh, one event, we had 106 dogs, you know, and I, I know it was nothing, actually, yeah. to have them. Yeah. But. Uh, I, I remember that place well. That was one of the first uh, events I went to, uh, clubs I went to in Michigan was the Calval Beagle Club. I, I don't know if it was called that or Lower Michigan at the time, but it was the state hunt, and it was there at that uh, VFW hall you're talking about. Matter of fact, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I had Todd Morgan on this podcast. We were, we were reminiscing about some of that. And just so happened a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of lost out in that area. Went to, it came from a different direction going over to my brother's place. And I happened to drive by there, and I still recognized it. It's kind of grown up and around there and everything, but it still right. sits there. Yep. So that was the first club right there yep, that you that had. that was the first club that we ever started. So who were some of the other guys that were involved with that? You mentioned Charlie, Charlie Martins. Yeah, it was Charlie Martins, uh, Travis Allen, Chuck Borman, Steve Bell, uh, Roy Swafford would help us, uh, Nate Butler. Oh, um, who's some I'm forgetting? Todd Morgan, Todd Callum. Yeah, Todd Morgan, Todd Callum. Yeah. Callum used to be big into it back then. He was. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, there was uh, my nephews. They were young also, but uh, they got involved in it too, as well as Redbone. And so Just members alone. You already had 15, 20 dogs entered right there probably. Yeah. I think back in the time we had 33 members, if I were, you know, right in that. Vicinity. So what year was that? Do you remember what, what year that would have been? I was I'm thinking say... 1992, but. Could be wrong on that. It was early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. So who were some of the, there were, there were other clubs in Michigan. You mentioned reading. Uh, what other clubs would have been already started in Michigan at that time? There was Langsburg. There was Onstead. Yeah. Homer was. They weren't before that, but they were yeah. shortly after us. Then in Indiana, you didn't have to go that far south to get into a couple other clubs in Indiana. The Albion Club is, was like my home club at right. the time. That was one of the first ones I went to. That's one of the first ones we started going yeah. in Indiana. Remember old John Hill? Oh, yeah. He always had that one spot. You guys remember the one spot? He always took winner's packs there, it seems like, on a lake. Remember that? You know, know the spot I'm talking about? Kind of a hillside is an awesome place to score dogs. 
Hmm. If anybody went there in the morning, usually that was the high <laughs> score. But oh, he ran his winter's packs there a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a really good spot. Maple so, Rapids probably. Maple had Rapids, a, and yeah, that's probably had a one. club yeah. then with the dailies. Yeah. Imagine. So what were uh, uh, Swamp Master? Where does people call you Swamp Master? Know you by Swamp Master, and I know that's what you call your kennels. How did how did how did you come up with that? Oh, uh, when I was a young youth. My dad and my uncles would put me in one end of the swamp, and they would sit on the other, and they'd send me through the swamp for deer hunting. Oh. And. You became good at it, must be. Oh, then they start (laughs) calling me Swamp Master. Oh, yeah. And that's where it all started. And it's stuck, huh? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I never never heard that story before, but. uh... Yeah, so uh, and and that's what you still have a lot of name call a lot of your dogs Swamp Master, yep. Swamp Master Kennels or whatever. So, um, so you've bred a lot of dogs over the years. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the breeding pa- practices or philosophies that you have used and that have worked for you over the years. I started with a buddy of mine. His name was Dale Larson, and. Uh, I was probably in my early 20s, I would say about 21, 22, whatever. And uh, I met Dale Larson at a trial, and he invited me to come up to his place. And uh, Which was also in Michigan here. Yep, yep. It was up in Coral, Michigan, and he had a 40-acre running pen, and he was running the striker line. And um, he wanted to uh, give me a a dog. And I took the dog and I started running it and did well in trials with it. And uh, from that time on, I ran 95% with all striker. And then as time went on, I, you start to learn the ability of dogs. And uh, when you're in it, Enough, you know, the number one ability is uh, you got to have on a dog is the uh, nose. Because the nose trains the brain as well as the hunt. Once a dog continues to do it, the brain will tell it to do it. Well, I've learned over the years that if you don't have a dog with a decent nose, you're not going to be successful in things you do. Um, I could bring an example of a dog named. Uh, chubby when i judged the world the dog was losing but i the dog went across on a line that the other three dogs couldn't get no scent off of but that dog had the ability to cross that line and won the world because of it yeah so yeah. the nose is to me in my opinion the nose is the number one factor and that's something you've also always tried to really hit yep. on when it comes to. And I, to... I push it hard into the dogs we have. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I, this uh, this morning before you guys showed up, or here at the UKC office, obviously, but I pulled up some records here of some of the dogs you have, and I think I have five or six pages of dogs that you've registered over the years here with us, uh, and I've highlighted a few of them. What were some of the Eric? What were some of the early dogs that you remember good dogs that you remember having um so the first male i remember was a dog named abe swamp masters abe right there he he is uh, first dog at the top of the list right there he uh that dog might have had about 300 points never never was a champion we couldn't get a first on him really he'd jump jump rabbits and uh great check dog and all that but just didn't have foot but we killed a lot of rabbits behind that dog. Then after that, our first champion was uh, Janie. I don't remember if that was Swamp Master's Janie or something else, but that was our first champion dog. So how old would you have been at that time? Oh, I was right about 10 years old. So Morgan was off a little bit. He said you were measuring dogs when you were eight. Yeah, I waited until I got to at least 10. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I probably was. Yeah, no, probably were. Uh, you probably were. So uh, I think I was, I would say right around probably 15 when uh, that Janie became a champion. So yeah. I was, I remember that. 
every time someone had their first champion dog, we'd always get together after and you know, a celebrate little party, a little yeah. bit. And yeah. it, it was a big thing, you know. Yeah. Everyone remembers that first one. Yeah, so Donnie, what were the first dogs you entered in the, in the UKC trials? Was it Abe? Abe was the first Abe, dog. Yeah. yeah, he was the first dog. And then uh, uh, I think that was the first dog he ran ever in the trial was Abe. But um, so I had some other ones, but I can't remember the names yeah. of them real fat. Yeah, there, I'm sure there was probably a, a ton of others outside of yeah. There was. Outside of the ones you registered here. So you, you mentioned that it was, that would have been in the early 90s, 92. So actually the, the UKC program had already kind of been rolling around a little bit. So yep. it's, so you, I, I guess you, you didn't go to the very first ones then that no. they had. No. And were, you weren't involved either with, I think Roy Swafford was involved some as far as uh, getting the first one started, but you guys weren't really on board yet at that time. No. Didn't even know him then, and oh, you didn't. Nope, didn't know Roy back then. Yeah, um, met him at uh, through the trials. Yeah, that's where we first met. And but it was only a couple of years after that. So outside of the first couple of years, you've pretty much been there the whole time. Yep, up to up to now. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, so a couple of the other dogs, you know, the one, a couple of that I really remember, uh, Irish Hill Kate, which was a dog Todd Morgan had at one time. I think he got her from you, right? And then you ended up with her, one I highlighted here. Um, Swamp Master's Commander is another one I remember. And I'll tell you how I remember that dog is. When I first started, uh, the dogs I had were too slow, didn't have enough foot. We realized that after about two, three trials. They were rabbit dogs, just didn't quite have the foot here. And when I say the foot, our dogs aren't the speediest dogs, you know, in UKC. But uh, what I had was just slower. Uh, so I went out and got uh, some uh, Franco bread stuff. And the first trial I went to, I got a young dog off of uh, uh, Reverend Sawyer. And uh, off of, uh, what was a grandson to Jack of All Trades. And one of Scott Cummings, New York, one of his females. You probably remember Scott. Mm -hmm. He was a field oh, rep yeah. in the early days. So my first trial was at Calval with his dog. And I drew you with Swamp Master's Commander. <laughs> you probably don't remember that hunt. I hope I don't remember drawing. No, but, but I, I do. I can tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> it may or may not refresh your memory. We had a three dog cast, so you were guiding, and all I can remember there was a fence row with some. It was a thick fence row, cornfield off on the left hand side. We flipped the dogs down this, and your two dogs, two of the dogs had a three dog cast. Two of the dogs, yours and the other guy, I don't even remember who it was. I'm thinking here, gosh, I've known Donnie Ant from he's this big name guy here in Michigan and he's got all these good dogs and everything, you know. And he's the guy I draw. I'm a little green yet at the time, you know. But anyways, uh this dog I'm hunting is only like nine months old, but he's been I've hunted the hair off him and everything. He's he's ready to roll, you know. <laughs> and he goes in the cornfield and he strikes and your two dogs strike about simultaneously in this fence row. And off jumps a deer up ahead there. And my dog, and I'm thinking, oh, man, this is easy. <laughs> Old Swamp is already out. You know? <laughs> and he ran in the corn. We even saw the rabbit a time, or I think one time called a line, and he uh, breaks down on it. And by this time, your dogs are out quite right a ways. He leaves, and he goes over in their hearts and with it. Do you remember that at all? No, I don't. All three of us were scratched. In 15 minutes, we were all done. <laughs> I'll be dang. That would be that. Was, that, that I would always remember that. I think that huh. commander dog was the first one you placed with at Nationals, if I remember right. I want to say he placed seventh first year you went. Almost yeah. positive he was the first I one. I know you did a bunch of winning with, with him then. I, I well, he kind of took him You kind of took him over. No. I want to say he was pretty young at that time, too. Yeah. Yeah. That was... T.A. Commander was the one I ran all the time. He was a little later. Yeah. He was, he was probably off, on. off a commander. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then another one, probably the one that had one of the bigger names that I remember, and it was Sing It Girl. Yeah. She was a winning fool. Yeah. What was she? What was she exactly? Striker bred to you again, she right? She was top and bottom striker. Yep. Nah. She just had the ability to, and one of the rare ones that we didn't have, the nose wasn't strong, but she knew where to go. And she would, 
she'd be a quick strike. But she knew where to go to look for a rabbit. She didn't spend her time out in some tall grass or whatever. She went right to the, you know, brush piles or wherever. Yeah. She just had that instinct. Yeah. And uh, one of the rare ones we ever had that had that kind of instinct to go to the place instead of using the nose to smell for it, you know. But, uh, yeah, and uh, we were offered uh, some good money for her at one time and turned it down. I give him the opportunity because it was pretty much his dog at that time. So I give him the opportunity, and he didn't want to sell her. So, But you look back, and you're thinking, hey, you get offered ten grand for a dog. Who's and, gonna? Not too many people are gonna turn that ten grand down. Yeah, that was what but middle middle, up, middle 90s, wasn't it? What was her? I have yeah, her uh, middle, issue. early two thousand, early two so late nineties yeah. is ninety eight birthday. So yeah, yeah. You know, buddy. Well, end up being a great friend of ours that um, has passed on. But Mike Ridenour, yeah. I'd, I'd met him down at the Nationals. He just come and do, introduced himself, and he wanted to buy her, so. I give him, like I say, I give him the opportunity and uh, paid off that we didn't. Yeah. Because it actually sell them pups and end up working out even better. Yeah. So did you breed her? Several I times? did. I uh, didn't get uh, what I expected out of her, which that's the way sometimes breeding goes. But. Um, Hey, as, as saying that, you know, this dog may have been the exception, but uh, my brother Phil, one of the best dogs I still, he and I talked about it the other day when I told him you guys were going to come on, uh, was a dog named Hannah that was off of her. Right. And she was as solid and well-rounded, balanced a rabbit dog as you will find. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah, how I much you guys ran with her, but she I was off the Hannah. Same. Hannah was. He got her well, off She was of, a nice yeah. dog. But as far as. Uh, the amount of yeah that we got wasn't what I expected yeah but like I say as you get into it over the years you learn yeah that you might have a top notch sire you think yeah until you start really breeding and see what you got out of the number of litter of pups so some are out there and some aren't yeah so what what uh, sing it won a lot yeah you ran her in the in the in the challenge series at the time, right? Yep. Who was running her? Were you running her? Or he was. You yeah, were? I ran her most of the time. Yep. Traveled with her quite a bit. Did she end, did she end up winning her category then? Yeah, I won it, I think, two years in a row, the challenge series. I know it, it was definitely two years in a row, maybe even three. But uh, she was just such an easy dog to hunt. That's what I loved about her so much is, if you ran her once a week, she'd perform. If you ran her five days a week, she'd perform. She was just as consistent of a dog as Didn't we've matter. owned. She wasn't high maintenance at all. Yeah, You just knew what you were going to get every weekend you took her out. And just an exceptional, what, exceptional jump dog. What were those days that, what were those days like? What was that like? Uh, the challenge series was a big thing back in those days. Yep. You were still young. I was in my early 20s, yeah. Yeah, and that had to be a ball. Oh, it was awesome. Traveled all over, didn't you? Oh, yeah. We went, every weekend we were going somewhere, and it was with good friends of ours from our club. And, uh, you know, all of us had nice dogs at yeah. that time. And I remember Foreman. Uh, yep. Chuck Foreman was one of them. You'd see yep. with you guys. And who was the other? Travis, Travis Allen. Travis Allen. Yeah. Steve Bell. Steve Bell. Four of us traveled a lot. Josh Mc uh, I always get his name wrong, but McLean. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, he traveled a lot. It was just fun. I mean, all of us young guys, a little trouble on the, on the road, but hey, yeah. it was fun. Yeah. I remember the state hunts, you know, Indiana state hunt used to be down in, uh, well, Albion, probably. Albion, I guess, is where it would have been. No, Magenica. Did Magenica yeah, used to have Magenica yep, had the Magenica state hunt. Magenica always yeah. had it. Yep. Yeah. That was one of my favorite hunts to go to. Loved running them rabbits down there on the reservoir and yeah. stuff. Man, they run big. Yeah. It was almost did. like hair in a way, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. 
So what were some of the highlights with Sing It for you? Uh, I guess number one was the challenge series stuff. I just, to me, a dog that can run in Michigan on snow and then the next weekend you travel to Virginia and you run in 70 degree weather and then the next weekend you go up to New York in two foot of snow you yeah. know, and back to Missouri in 70 degree weather. Yeah. It's like it takes a special dog to be able to travel that distance yeah. and to be able to run and all that stuff. So yeah. that, that to me was... Yeah, you mentioned different trains. I know you guys go up north and hunt snowshoe. Did you? Did you? Were you going up north during the during those days and hunting yeah. on hare as well? Oh yeah, yeah. We did that before. I remember as a kid doing that before we were even trialing going yeah. to Kalkaska. Yeah, I used to go oh, yeah. in the early seventies. Oh yeah, start going up with my dad and uncles. So, Donnie, we've uh, talked about Sing It quite a bit, uh, one of the nice females you owned back in the day. What were some of the others? One another one I highlighted that I remember was Beauty, but yep. what uh, her and what, what are some of the others that, uh, that were some of your better hounds back in the day? Oh, dog I had by name of Blazer. Um, First national champion. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Kate, obviously. Irish Hills Kate. Yep, Irish what was Hill. she? What was she? She oh, was she, bred? Uh, she was bred. Um, it was Todd Morgan's right-hand man. Righty. Righty. And then uh, Gertie. His Gertie female. Flint um, Creek Gertie. Flint Creek Gertie. Yeah. Which that probably comes from Scott Cummings as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Flint Creek yep. did. I got her. Well, she might have been less than a year old. Got her. Kind of a funny story with that one. I was out running dogs, and all of a sudden, here comes this dog up on the railroad bed next to me and wouldn't let me catch her. So I finished running dogs, and it just stayed there with me the whole time. Go back up to my truck. As soon as I got to the truck, here she come. So I grabbed her, and I looked at the collar. It says Todd Morgan. And I said, you got to be kidding me. So <laughs> I get back to the house. I call him up. and. He's like, no, I'm not missing no dog. And he come, uh, uh, came to the house to look at it, and he goes, oh, I know who that is, Travis Allen's page dog, which turned out to be credible dog, front page news. Yeah, I remember and, that dog, uh, too. We just got to talking, and he goes, hey, I got some young dogs, and I was looking to get a young dog, so went over to his house I don't know, next weekend or something, just picked her out. Yeah. Turned out to be a pretty nice dog. Yeah. Yeah, so that was she would did you hunt her after Sing It or is that before? Before before, before yep. Sing It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about, you hunted mostly females? You had some males too, right? You mentioned Blaze. I had uh probably majority of them were males. Driver. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh Hemi. Yeah. Uh, Chief was no yeah, doubt. Chief was uh, another one. Uh, Money. Yeah. So, Money I Go ahead. Money, I did well, you know. Yeah. But he was even, uh, he was a not even bred striker at all. Oh yeah. But um, we, a uh, friend of ours, we traded pups, so that's how I end up with money. Yeah. But I, re you mentioned striker here a couple times, uh, but I believe from what I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but Hannah, the, my brother's dog, Hannah, off of Sing It, was. Was wasn't she? She was. She had striker a couple times in her three yeah. generation, didn't yep. she? She, she did. might have been out of Boomer, yeah. Larson's Boomer. Yep, maybe. Yeah, it might have been that cross, and yeah. Boomer was out of striker. Yeah, uh, the Nationals, uh, UKC Hunting Beagle Nationals. Mm -hmm. You kind of had a thing there for a good while, and probably won a category at the Nationals more than any other. Breeder, how many times have you placed first in a category at national? How many times? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. I a lot. Don't know offhand, but <laughs> seems like quite a few times. Do you remember some of the dogs that you that you won the categories at national? Yeah, I did. I won with uh, Smoke. Um, 
I can't remember the female's name right off hand that I ran all the time. The actual categories, the overall categories? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that was, you're thinking just cast, so I get blazer one registered. I want. I oh, thought there was a uh, national. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Hemi, I was, go ahead. Um, Hemi blazer, uh, driver, um, beauty. I won twice with beauty. I won uh, registered and champions. Um, Kate and Kate. I was going to say there's at least six or seven. 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 Yeah. There's seven total. Five registered, I, I think. Five registered categories, yeah, I think. About yeah. right. I don't think anybody has ever won a first in a category at the Nationals more than you guys have over the years. Mm -hmm. It's all him. I don't know nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I can't win nothing there. Place a little bit, but well, he, he wins all the big stuff. <laughs> yeah. I always look forward to going. Nationals was my favorite time of year. Yeah. So what, what do you guys do uh, to prep a dog for a hunt like that? Anything special? Do you really do you really hunt them hard, or it just really depend on the dog? Or depends on the dog consistency. You know, if it's if you're not gonna continue to run a dog if it shows that it don't have the ability to uh, drive five and a half six hours and do well in your opinion. And the ones we have taken, been lucky enough that they have. Yeah, and it seems like. That weekend is the weekend they shine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you've had uh, you've shined a lot at the nationals like, over the years. I can tell you that. Um, let's talk about the, your reputation in the beagling community. You've earned a really good reputation. The name Yant. I think maybe nowadays people look at you guys as being solid judges and always have. Where does that come from, or have you always really been a stickler for rules? I know Charlie Martins was another one. You know, they, mm -hmm. a lot of guys knew when they come up here to Michigan or whatever. Um, judging's going to be solid. It is. You learn to respect other people's opinion as you're brought up as a kid, and then when you get out in the cast and you see somebody that approaches in a different way and may get upset and you learn to keep your patience and explain to them the reason for this situation and the rules will fall into play 99% of the time. There's times out there that you're going, how, how are we going to figure this one out? But if you learn that not getting upset out there is going to do any, any good for you, you, you pretty much uh, respect. You respect other people's opinion and and your honesty will will show. Yeah. But, yeah, I remember that, you know, from back in the middle nineties already, you know, hunting with you guys and just the reputation back then or whatever. Both for both of you. Eric, you too, you were pretty young, but uh I remember you were a solid judge back then and guys were already talking. You hear people talking about, you know. Yeah. You guys know how it is. If somebody doesn't have a very good reputation, it kind of leaks around pretty quickly, but it was and it was always good when it came to the Yants, it seemed like, throughout the years. That's, it's like anything else. You put your dog behind the others. Yeah. Other people, when you're judging, and it's a human thing. Yeah. You know, you just always try to make forth, you know, hustle to get to somebody else's dog. Yeah. I mean, you will your own, but not like you do other people. And often, don't you agree, oftentimes if you set the standard and you, you call things straight up right out of the gate, oftentimes that just sets the standard for the whole hunt. Absolutely. Got to be consistent. Yep. 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 Field rep. When did you become a field rep? What year was that? Mm, I think it was 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and I had some big shoes to follow when Roy Swafford stepped down from it. So that was, that's when you came right. on board was after yeah. Roy? When Roy okay. stepped down and I, he asked me if I was interested. And he he'd be talked Todd to Morgan. Morgan and yeah. Morgan oh, got oh, uh, Roy asked you if he'd be yeah. interested. Roy yeah. asked me if I would be interested. And yeah. him and Todd had talked. And so the three of us communicated. And so I did. And so I knew that I would have to have my head on straight to 
follow his footsteps. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know Roy always respected you too, you know, yeah. so I'm not, I'm not surprised that, uh, that Great would have been friendship. his choice. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what were some of the most enjoyable parts of being involved as a, as a rep for you? What did you, what, was it uh, was it going to the national events or was it working with uh, it the was everything. local clubs around home here or what? Uh, being with the uh, after hunts, associating with the other reps, uh, listening to their opinion towards things that you know I've learned, as well as you know helping give my opinion on some things. So you kind of friendship like. Um, some of the guys from way down south, you don't get to see them often, yeah. you know. So yeah, communicating, it's, with it, them it's is still a lot. like that at the World Hunt and the Nationals. We try to use the reps to help us run those events, you know. And it's yeah. and it's always good. And I've always, man, you sit back. You need good help, but it always every time we get to the Nationals or the World for that matter, you you can't do everything by yourself. But the reps just always, they've done it for so long. They know what's expected. And man, from an administrator's end of it or administrative end of it, there's, it's good to have a good solid team of reps like yeah, that. And there is. There's some good people. Do you have some good stories or anything like that from things that happen at the, at the hunts? With the, um, yeah, there was, there was a few. But. Yeah. <laughs> Always uh, after the hunt, yeah, you know, there'd be, I don't know, six, seven, eight of us get together and some tip, of my good buddies would bring up some moonshine. And <laughs> yeah. And then we really got to tell some stories. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, yeah. it's enjoyable. Great people. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I took Todd over for Todd Morgan when he stepped aside in 2008, I think it was in, uh, and you were already a field rep then, obviously, and um, it's always been good working with you. And I know you've done it for a long time, and and um, you you really set a good example for a lot of hunters in this area in your region. They always respected you, and you always saw that in Eric as well. You know, um, with your judging and everything, just solid. And uh, you can't find anybody that you're you've become a preferred judge. That's <laughs> why you, we. I, you know, I use you all the time, yeah. both of you at the nationals and the world whenever we can or whatever, but there's also a good reason for it. You know, if, if we have anything, you just know there's not going to be any issue. If there is, you're going to take care of it. We probably won't even find out about it, but, uh, but just, and, and even the hunters, they, they respect that, you know, even sometimes even they may not agree or whatever, but, uh, you just have a way about it. And, and I think you see that in, in Eric too now. So that's, there's a lot to be said there. Yeah, but I I sure appreciate everything that you've done for United Kennel Club and and working with you through those years and and we've not made any official announcement yet, but you have recently asked to step down as a rep and um, yeah. So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for everything. Oh, I you've appreciate done. it. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate everything. Did a lot over the years and yeah, really he, he deserves to be you know, possibly the next one. Yeah, and so, and we've already talked yeah. about that, and it kind of seems like that's just that's a that's an easy choice you know there's no uh it's for eric to kind of take over there so eric yeah. uh, <laughs> you, you should have been able to learn a lot from him i'm sure you yeah. did and and it'll be i think you'll do a great job i'll try my best oh you'll do good i know <laughs> and you'll I, I, i'm probably going to be leaning on you quite a bit and some of it will be with some of this podcast stuff you know we yeah already talked to you about it a little bit i want to go through all the rules and everything and i don't i think it'd be good to have somebody as is out there in the field a whole lot as you are uh and oftentimes judging just trying to uh, talk about those infield examples and this and that help me out with that stuff so i think that'll be good mm -hmm. so sure. but yeah donnie i really appreciate everything yeah, you've sure. done and on not just me but on behalf of united kennel club before yeah. that you've been yeah. a really big part of the enjoyed program. it yeah yeah so, i really enjoyed it so yeah so eric let's move over to you a little bit Redbone. Where does that name come from? <laughs> We've got Swamp Master and Redbone, but where yeah. does Redbone come from? Well, growing up, I had red hair. I don't have a lot of hair anymore, but <laughs> it, was, it was red hair, so uh, <clears throat> my nickname was Red. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly. I think I was somewhere around 10, 12 years old playing baseball. 
slid into home and broke a bone in my foot. And I don't remember if it was my dad or the other coach um, that started calling me Redbone, but one of them threw it out there and Redbone stuck with me ever since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way more people know me by that than they do Eric. <laughs> yeah, especially people around this area. Everybody yeah. around here just calls you Redbone. But yeah, so obviously you grew up around the sport uh, most of your life, around the dogs and yep. everything. Who, uh, outside of your dad, who were some of your other mentors if you had any? Oh, sure. Uh, Charlie Martins. Obviously, pretty much every hunt we went to, it was... At least the three of us and Charlie's son went to a lot of them early in the years. Um, and then my uncle Jeff, he was a part of it a lot too. I remember I even went to a few hunts. Him and I would go to some hunts. So uh, Charlie and my uncle were two of the big ones. Yeah. Along yeah. with my dad, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I think we briefly mentioned it maybe uh, uh but we had Todd Morgan on a couple of weeks ago and he mentioned you that he took issue with the Cal Val club or got some complaints about the Cal Val club. They got this little kid out there measuring dogs. He, he said he kind of, he had to deal with this. He was talking about you. He yeah. said, you're out there. People are complaining. They've got an eight year old kid out there measuring dogs. He's throwing dogs off. Do you remember yeah. those days? I do. Oh, I definitely remember when you're measuring <laughs> 60, 70 dogs and, over a hundred dogs through a weekend. Yeah, I, I definitely remember those days. But, you know, as a kid, I didn't know any different that, you know, how a dog acts around other dogs and a yeah. bunch of people and stuff. So, you know, them big males come up there, they're all, you know, wanting to, I don't want to say fight, but, you know, they're all stiff. And yeah. It's like. Amped up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And I didn't know that at the time. So yeah. a dog comes up there and I put the stick on him and they're over you're out well yeah. <laughs> ended up all right better get the master hounds come over here and let the dog walk a little bit you know calm the dog down get it away from stuff and yeah then, yeah okay yeah so well he didn't he didn't say that it was a bad thing he's just uh you know yeah just hey this kid he's just a kid up here making these decisions <laughs> or whatever but but he did say you were doing a good job he said you put some out that nobody else had the I would put out sometimes. For sure <laughs> remember a lot of people, man, this is the first time I've been measured out. <laughs> you know, from what I remember, don't you think we had more dogs back then that were kind of the borderline dogs than we see today? A lot more. I think a lot more, wasn't it? Yep. You saw that a lot more where they got measured out as compared to today. And I don't think it's a, a case of they're letting letting them slide today. It's just. No, it's just, breeding. you know, the dogs were just uh, bred to, to run in. Uh, yeah. 15 and a half, yeah. 16 inch, you know, they were allowed in some yeah. formats to run. Yeah. Well, now, you know, UKC's never allowed it. So it's been a little more stricter with UKC than other formats. So then yeah. they come to UKC hunt to want to run and it didn't work out. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, and you know, we have dogs that are kind of right up there, but you don't oh, yeah. you just don't see that a whole lot, you know. It kinda everybody kinda respects that and knows that if you're over fifteen, you're just not gonna get in, you know. Yeah, but, I don't even remember a dog being measured out this year in the nationals. At the nationals, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. That's one thing we've used you a lot for is uh is on the measuring side of things. Yeah. Permanent measuring and, yep. and measuring dogs in for the event. Uh Eric, what are uh what are some of the your favorite events throughout the years? Uh, nationals is by far my favorite. Um, I don't want to miss that hunt <laughs> yeah. at all. Um, what is it about the nationals that you just, uh, could just seeing everybody once a year? Yeah. I mean, you see everybody, you see a lot of great dogs, but it's the prime time of year to run a dog. Rabbits, you know, are smelling great. Yeah. It's just the prime conditions. And to me, Everybody wants to um, see a dog at its best. And that time of year, your dog should be at its best. And that's, it takes out a lot of, there's luck involved in everything. But to me, the top dogs are going to perform at that time of year. 
And, and if you have them ready, that's the platform where they can excel if you have them ready. Absolutely. Oh. And uh, obviously a little partial to it, but the Michigan State Hunt is always one of my favorites. The Indiana State Hunt, one of my favorites. Love going to those. Yeah. So you earlier you talked a little bit about running Sing It in the Challenge Series. And uh, is that still something that you would do today if we had something like that? Or is that something for the younger guys to chase after? No, I... Uh, do you still have that drive yeah, to go oh, after absolutely. I, I've had it even, you know, I don't know, probably the last 10 years or so. I haven't competed as much traveling-wise because of my work schedule. So I've kind of got to that point where I miss out on it too much. So I'm making a conscious effort. I'm going to go to more hunts. You know, I work a lot of weekends, yeah. so it's tough for me. Yeah. But I've noticed, though, here in the last year or two, you've, you've been you to know, more trials than yeah. you had been in previous couple of years. Yep. I just finally said, this is some, I'm going to start using my vacation for, yeah. Yeah. for that stuff. So, yeah. So we talked about some of the, some of the good hounds you guys have had in your kennels. What are some of the better dogs that you've seen throughout the years? Oh man. You see, you've had to see some good ones. Yep. Uh, a couple females that I think are as good as anything I've seen. One was, I mentioned earlier, just down the road for me, front page news. Paige was an exceptional dog. She won challenge series herself. Um, and then, uh, White River Rose, he was an incredible dog that Jason Vandergriff would run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really enjoyed her. And then, uh, oh, on the male side, I like Mystery Man. Denny um, Dugan's. Denny Dugan's Mystery Man, Manny. And uh, another White River dog, uh, Bo, a touch tone. He was, uh, turned out to be a pretty exceptional dog. Mm -hmm. Incredible jump dog. I remember most about him. Those are a couple good ones. So, uh, a question for both of you: if, uh, those some of those good top dogs from back in the day, how do you think they would stack up with some of the dogs today? The Mongos, the Chiefs, the some of the big name dogs today. No problem. Yeah, it's. I don't think it's changed over the years. I think breeding got smarter amongst a lot of people. Don't we have more consistent dogs? Yeah, than we used to. Yeah, we have by far more consistent dogs. I think the dogs that we had back in the day would, I would not even hesitate to run them in trials. Um, but as a group of houndsmen, I think we've all took it upon ourselves to make it more consistent amongst our breeding. Uh, the dogs we, we run, I don't think they're any better, to be honest with you today compared to back in the day yeah or vice versa yeah no i think it's just we've gotten smarter yeah just a lot of good breeding over the years and yeah yeah, yeah. eric um uh, mentioned it a little bit before judging you're an expert judge a preferred judge in in and i'm not uh, trying to blow smoke up <laughs> anything here but uh it's I, okay. I i hear it all the, i hear it all the time you know, it's, I'm not just saying it's not just coming from me, but uh, the guys say that guy's good. So many times I've had people come back from a cast and come up to me and say, "That Eric guy from Michigan, he's a dang good judge. He can judge me and my dogs any day." Hear it so many times. What? How? What has made you become that type of judge? What do you? Th well, what do you think it is? Seeing the people. Like my dad judging, seeing Charlie judging, um, how they do it. And you just, you got to stay calm. Like too many people, they, they get too hot headed at times or they get frustrated. And they, you, you just got to stay consistent with your calls and involve the whole cast. I mean, you don't have to be the, you know, this is the way it's going to be, you know, talk to people out yeah. there and, you know, discuss things. Don't have Obviously, to be dramatic. and No, yeah. it, and you got to, even if someone else loses their cool, you still, as the judge, you got to stay calm, you know, just ask people's opinion and, yeah. and 
you know, you got to make your own decision. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with involving the whole cast. I think where people get in trouble is when they, they, they don't worry about the cast. They just, I'm the judge. This is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And I just don't think that's the right way to do it. And and probably from what I've seen you judging sometimes, I think sometimes you're almost harder on your own dogs than you are on anybody else's. Not that you give anybody else's, but there's a, there is. I'll j- just an example of one time I drew you, we were hunting back at Buck Lake. You probably don't even remember that. You were judging. Uh, three of our dogs scored. Your dog was off a little bit, maybe borderline to some, but I'm telling you, eight out of ten people would have scored your dog, and you didn't. But the thing that, the thing that I remember about that that I thought was, you know, right there, that guy's not scoring his dog, and I'm not going to complain if he is – I'm not going to complain if you if you don't score my dog because you know you're doing the same thing with your dog right here. Yeah, you can't. You kind of you set the tone for it is what it did. It really did. You can't judge by how your dog does. Yeah, you got to judge by. Doesn't matter whose dog it is. It doesn't. No, I you know scoring lines is one thing that causes a lot of the controversy. But to me, it's simple to tell if a dog has a track or not. Yeah. Yeah. And. It, and when it's my own dog, obviously I know that dog a little yeah. better. There's time that that dog doesn't know that. I think there. that's the right there. That speaks volumes. And I've always said that if you know dogs, the dog will tell you. Yeah. The dog will tell you if you know how to read that dog. Absolutely. Whether he has it or he doesn't, he or she or what have you. Yeah. But do you enjoy judging? I do, unless I'm in the mountains. <laughs> or some, yeah, like or some Tennessee. Big hills. Yeah, <laughs> West Virginia and Virginia. Where, yeah. Heck, even in Ohio, they, those are mountains to me. Yeah. No, I, I do for the simple fact that I feel like I know the rules, so the cast just runs smoother. If you got someone in there that doesn't know the rules, and then they keep asking you the rules, it's like... Okay, it just too many things are questioned. You come back with three or four questions on the card. If you got a judge that knows the rules, everything just runs smoother. Yeah. So I, I do enjoy it, but I've been doing it for so long now, I don't have a problem letting other people judge or something like that. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. But Yeah, and isn't there also something good to see, especially if you can mentor some people or some – kids or whatever and see them doing well oh, if you absolutely. can kind of help them along the way a little bit so yeah, yeah. rules yeah. are important yeah um what what is it that you like most about the sport today i know it's changed from the old days you know uh but what is what is it that you like most about the sport today oh i don't or that know. you still enjoy it for all these years man it's kind of the same to me yeah people <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, i mean that's Number one. Yeah. I mean, we can go around our dogs at home all you want. But, yeah. I mean, you want to get out there with other people yeah. and see your friends and people you don't see all the time. So yeah. that part are, is by far the best, just getting out there and seeing other people. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your, what would you consider some of your most memorable accomplishments that you've had in the sport? I would say the challenge series stuff. Um, that was tough. Yes, yeah, so it was very tough. A lot of great dogs competing every weekend against them. The same dogs, you know. That's that. That was my like. I hold those to the highest as the challenge series. So, uh, Donnie and Eric, both of you, I guess, but let's, Donnie, let's start with you. Uh, what part of working with hounds do you enjoy the most? Is it training? Is it the training aspect of it? Is it the pleasure hunting, prepping for hunts, uh, handling dogs and trials? What? What do you enjoy training. most? Training? Yeah. From, I, from uh, young up? From young up. And then once a buddy of mine and I got the pen up and going, that pretty much took over. I mean, I could spend seven days a week if I do, yeah. but, but all day. Um, my wife has even brought me sandwiches over there or something to drink. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's, it's like being with a bunch of kids out on the 
field with sports of some kind. Yeah, for those you know? that for those that don't know, you mentioned the pen. You have a what is it? A five acre, ten acre, twenty pen? acre, twenty acre pen. Yeah, yeah. So you see a lot, you know, and and a plus helps you as an individual. You know, if there's something out there, I'm not kettled. Yeah, I've run striker for many years. But yeah, if I see something out there. And you probably get to see a lot of young I do. prospects. I've seen doing that. just about every line of dogs there is. And you get them from all over. I know guys from out of state bring dogs to you all the time. Yep, I do. I can Canada even. Yeah. So I get to see quite a bit, but I enjoy it. And now that I'm about ready to retire, the enjoyment of even getting better. Yeah. Heck so. yeah. What about you, Eric? Uh totally opposite of that. I I'm not a big fan of running the young dogs. I let him do that stuff. So I enjoy once they're a couple years old, getting ready for trials, that type of running, yeah. older dogs. Yeah. Um, question, Donnie, for you, both of you, actually. Uh, what, what advice would you have for uh, beaglers, new beaglers coming in, just new to the sport? What advice would you give them? Patience and learn the rules and respect what someone out there has a scorecard in her hand, respect what they got to tell you. It may not always go your way, but as you learn, and they're going to help you, just take the time and learn the rules. Yeah, and that's one of the notes I have, how important is learning the rules, and obviously you feel it's very important, as, as do I. You'll learn more out there. You can sit and go through the rule book, but you'll learn more by listening to what someone else. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Eric? I would say understanding that your dog is not the only good dog out there. There's other dogs that are just as good. So some people coming in right away, they think they got to win everything. Well, one day your dog's going to look really good, and when it's cast, the next day it's yeah. you know not yeah. going to, and it's going to lose. So you just can't be angry when you lose, you know? Yeah, and I, and I would agree with that. Uh, that, that's good advice for new guys. What advice would you give Eric uh, as far as a field rep role goes? Keep your uh, poise just like you got because there's a lot of good guys out there. You pretty much know them all. Yeah. But, uh, I don't think no, you have to tell them your, a whole lot. But. Just put your opinion out there, you know. Yeah, so let's segue away from the trials just a little bit. The one passion you guys have that I have is hare hunting, snowshoe hunting. Tell us a little bit about that. You go up north every year, don't you? We do. We as a group. And you've done it for years. go up with us. Jeff Davis goes up. My wife, she enjoys going up. Um, but, yeah, we, uh, we enjoy turning the young dogs that we have out there. And it's kind of a training up there with young dogs, too. They go out of hearing distance. Well, around us. Dog goes out of hearing distance, you pretty much know it's not a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. So up there, it's just a different game of yeah. running, but it's fun, enjoyable. Yeah, very enjoyable. Love it, love it. Hey, one question: Do you see what I see sometimes? A, a dog, you have dogs, sometimes different dogs that excel on hair that may not. not you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In other words, you know, I right now I have a dog that is very mediocre on cottontail, seems like, go up there. And he's kind of got that breeding behind him. But take him up there, he's just a different dog. Do you right. see that sometimes in dogs? Sure. I think some dogs that have uh, maybe a little looser on a track, they can run a hair a lot better because it runs straighter. Yeah. I mean, it's just a simple fact. Yeah. It runs straighter. And they got a little more, um, more scent, in my opinion. So a dog can really perform at its best on a hair yeah. compared to cottontail. There's times where you go around a cottontail and it's like, my dog know what it's doing. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had that question running the hair. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like you said, they'll go out of hearing, but it's amazing how they can go out of hearing and just two minutes later, boom, here they are. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how fast they can go. <laughs> uh, bear hunting. I know you guys like to go up to Canada bear hunt. You still do that every year? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I shot my best bear last year up there. So, oh yeah, I think I don't know seven or eight. I've shot something like that. How many exactly. years have you guys been doing that? Two thousand was my first year going up with a friend of mine. Fred That's Willis. in Canada. Yep. And then uh, two thousand one, we bought the property up there. So 
been going up quite a few years. Yeah. Done well. Had a lot of good years. Remember him shooting his first bear. Yeah. Some great friends of ours go up. Um, the then we've met some phenomenal people up there. That they even look forward to us going. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen you've got a couple uh, mounted bears there at the house that, that yep. you've taken Shot up there. Quite a few over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, softball. Ever since I've known you, you've, you've been running beagles or playing softball, fast pitch softball. Uh, slow pitch, fast pitch over the years. Yeah. But uh, are you still doing it? No. Nope. Had a little setback in 2000 and. Um, now I have some other summer activities that yeah. I've taken on. I wanted to play softball again this year, but yeah. wasn't able to. Yeah. But um, I have others, things, grandkids games, most exciting part of the yeah. summer. But uh, I hope uh, next year to get back into it. Yeah. I remember uh, probably in the mid-90s, maybe a guy, a fast pitch pitcher from some other country pete help me out you know who i'm talking about pete maravich or somebody like that you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah i know who you're talking about. he was bad yeah bad bad dude yeah do like 106 miles yeah an hour. exactly yeah, yeah that guy that. yeah um what's your you talked about retirement a little bit this morning in, in the when we're sitting out in the office this is your last week yep working before you, you're gonna officially retire yep. What's retirement looking like for Swamp Master? Excitement. I'll be able to hear the last three, four years. He's done a lot of complaining to me because I've put my dogs in behind. I have. Because when a great friend of mine passed away, Charlie, we used to rotate with the pen. Well, now it's pretty much just me. I don't have the time for my own dog. But now that I'm retiring, I'll be able to get up in the morning, put dogs in the pen, go run my own dogs, come back, watch the dogs in the pen. Yeah. yeah. And plus all the traveling we got planned. Yeah. You mentioned you got a, a toy hauler RV yep. with it. A- bought a toy hauler and a side by side and looking forward to even going to the grandkids' games on weekends out of yeah. town and yeah. taking it. So for sure. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up with that, but I really do appreciate you guys coming in this morning. It's been interesting, so uh, thank you again. and uh, yeah, Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, so look forward to working with you, Eric. Yeah, so. it's just the start. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, congratulations on your retirement, and thank you again, Donnie, for everything you've, you've brought as a field rep to you. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow UKC Hunting Ops on Facebook and Instagram.